So, um, my name is Stephen Sarikaku, and I was born in June of 1951. My family lived on the south side at that time, but when I was three, we moved up into Uptown. Uptown, a northern Chicago neighborhood where rich history and international diversity intersect. Sarikaku spoke of Uptown in his childhood as one with fond memories. The ease of transportation, the numerous bus stops, the Wilson L station near his house, it was the kind of neighborhood that served as home for many. We would walk down to Montrose Harbor in, you know, during the warm months, and my dad loved to go fishing. So, you know, a bamboo pole, some bait, you know, it was a really cheap way to pass the time. And, and if you were lucky, you know, you, you caught something that you could eat, right? Although, looking back, <laughs> I probably would want to have it chemically analyzed. You know, Uptown had this flavor. It, it, it had this atmosphere, you know, um, that anybody belonged. And now, it, it kind of lost that. Once a port of entry for people of all ethnic, social, and economic backgrounds, Uptown has seen an increasing amount of gentrification, which has overhauled many of the beloved aspects that reside in Sarakaku's memories. However, this is only part of a bigger issue, which involves the systematic separation of people. To me, once you are marginalized one set of people, it makes it a lot easier to marginalize more and more people. And um, because we live in a segregated society, um, not just by race, but also by class. And, you know, the in income inequality in this country has uh, made it so that the, really, the richest people, they, they don't have to have any connection with the, um, the consequences of, of their policies. But as a school teacher, you get to see the devastation in the neighborhoods, right? You get to see people who used to be able to have a, a middle class living, uh, live in dignity and security, all of a sudden they lose that. Gentrification is not a simple happenance, but a result of neoliberalism and a systematic force which seeks to drive out the poorest and most vulnerable. It is not only a force which expels people from their homes, but one which destroys people's basic rights. You know, children are so pure. <laughs> and, and, and you get to see um, burgeoning human beings, and, and then you meet their parents, and how beat down some, some of them are. And, and you know, I, after 34 years in the Chicago Public Schools, you know, I got to see generation after generation where instead of things getting better, they got worse. And it's like, <laughs> you know, when I was working in the, in the schools, we would have kids who would die of um, an asthma attack, right? In the 1980s, right? You would think, right? In the 1980s in this country, why would somebody die of an asthma attack, you know? And, and the thing is, we, we, we let it get worse and worse as the years went on. So when you do that, people lose faith in the system. They don't see a better future for themselves or their children. And the children don't see a better future. In today's world, which favors individualism, it is so easy to overlook one another and believe that one person's problem will never affect your own life. As a college student juggling a part-time job, school, extracurriculars, and more, I understand how easy it is to make excuses. It is so easy to feel like you have to put yourself first when the world feels on fire. But there are always people and resources to help you. You can always make a difference, no matter how small. We cannot let those in power take away our right to see humanity in one another and overcome together. You know, in the big city, people don't engage with each other anymore. They don't try to see the humanity in each other anymore. You know, you, you, you ride public transportation and nobody talks to each other, right? We would, we would be a much safer society. We would be a much more humane society if we weren't afraid to engage with each other, to, to, to find the humanity in each other, like our, our common humanity. You know, work as a community to make sure that, that nobody goes without that, that everybody is safe. That would be a much better society than the one we have now. You may not see the, the benefit of um, being politically active, but um, in our current system, 
there is no other way to um, create the change that you that you want to see, and you never know, right? Um, how many people never thought that we would have marriage equality, right? How many people never thought that a black man could be elected president of the United States? So, you know, we can't we can't lose hope, right? Uh, because the forces that that be want us to lose hope because that will demobilize us and allow them to do whatever they want. And they've been doing that for so long and it's hurt so many people. So we can't allow that to go on anymore.